desperation in the voices of those police officers is gut-wrenching. It's just released video from West Allis, Wisconsin. The officers trying to coax a three-year-old little boy named MJ out of a burning home. They had seconds to spare as smoke filled up the back bedroom. They could see MJ, but couldn't get to him. It happened Sunday just outside Milwaukee. Multiple homes were on fire. And as officers got to the scene, neighbors were calling out to them, telling them a child was trapped. 707 is fully engulfed. I can't get in. There's a three-year-old in the back bedroom. Can you tell me what's important? Stop. Should be locked. 426. Despite being beaten back by flames and smoke, the officers didn't back down. After smashing out the window, they called out for the little boy, hoping he'd follow the sound of their voices. MJ, can you hear me? MJ, come on, buddy. MJ! It's the police! It's okay, buddy, come on! And then, in this heart-stopping moment, they spot him through the smoke. Echo. Can, if I get... Oh, hey, MJ, come here! MJ, come on, buddy! Come here! MJ, it's okay, MJ, buddy, come on! MJ, this way! MJ! MJ, come on! Oh, MJ! Can you, if you lift me up, can you, can you hold me? MJ! Hey! You're right here, buddy! Buddy, you're right there! He's right there! He's right there! The officers attempted to climb into the bedroom. They can see MJ now. They know they only have seconds to get him. Break it, break it. Freddy, watch out! He's right. We're gonna do it, do it now. Come on, we got to We got it. MJ! MJ! They can't get through the window. And then, out of the darkness, a firefighter appears. Methodically, he rips out the window frame, by then black smoke billowing out the window. Flames only getting bigger. Time's running out. They can't see MJ anymore. The firefighter climbs into the home over furniture in a chest of drawers. The officers call out instructions about where they last saw the three-year-old. Young white, young white. He's on the floor to your right. Floor to your right. Down to the right. In less than a minute, the firefighter finds MJ, hands him to a waiting officer who rushes the limp toddler to a waiting ambulance. We are thrilled to be joined tonight by Lieutenant Daniel Rohde of the West Allis Fire Department and Corporal Ryan Schultz of the Police Department there. Lieutenant Rohde is the firefighter you saw on that video climbing into the burning home. Corporal Schultz was the first officer on the scene. It's his body cam we've been watching. Thank you both for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it. Wow. Uh, first, Lieutenant Rohde, let me start with you. How is MJ doing? I understand you, you just got an update on it. Yeah, my chief was able to get an update from his mother saying that uh, he's no longer on the vent ventilator in the ICU at the hospital and is in good spirits. Oh, well, that's a huge, huge relief. Um, Corporal, you were one of the first ones on the scene. Tell me what's going through your mind as you arrive there. Uh, as when I got there, it was pretty hectic. Obviously, the family screaming that their little ones in the back bedroom. So I wanted to do what anyone else would do is try to get them off, get them some help. And, Corporal, you're trying to get this kid through this tiny window. It's the only opening you have. Talk to me about that moment when you see MJ, but you can't get to him. Uh, when when uh, I broke out the window there, and then when Officer Cooper showed up and the rest of my officers there, uh, we lifted up Officer Cooper. He's a little lighter than I am, so we lifted him up, and he saw him in there. But just with the dressers there and everything, was in our, all the gear we wear, it's just kind of tough to get in there. So, Lieutenant Rohde, when you get into that window, could you see anything? Did you immediately see the boy? How did you, how were you able to find him? So once I cleared out the window uh, and entered, there was no visibility of the smoke uh, had banked down low enough that I couldn't see him. So I had to be very careful getting down so I didn't cause any injury and make sure the area was clear that I was going to step into. Uh, once I got down to the floor, there was a, uh, a haze, but more clear visibility and I was able to locate MJ. At that point, I went to the door to secure because there was fire in the hallway to improve our conditions within the room. Then I brought MJ to the window and handed him off to the police department. And, and he was not, um, he, he didn't have burns on him, is that correct? It was just smoke inhalation? Uh, he was whimpering, uh, he was rather limp, and uh, however, I did not notice any burns to him. And the family had not conveyed any indication that he had any burns. And, and, and the mother here also had a older relative, right, who was also in the building, who she was able to rescue earlier, is that right? That's my understanding, correct. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, Corporal, when you were called to this scene, 
Did you have any idea what was going to be happening there, or did this all come to you as you're arriving at the scene and someone yells that there's a baby trapped? Uh, as I was pulling up, um, you can see the flames from a little bit away. As I was pulling up, our dispatch center advised that they were getting information that there was a child still in the home. And, and, and again, just that moment when you're yelling to MJ and you're saying, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, you know, when, when you and, and your partners there are yelling to, for him to come over, what is he doing at that time? Is he, is he just sort of disoriented? Is he coming close towards you and you just can't quite reach him? It was a little bit of both. From my understanding, he was crawling around on the floor and uh, laying on the floor. And obviously, it's, uh, there's a lot going on there. And he's been using that smoke for a good amount of time. So disorientation can be assumed and just, you know, it's loud and I'm sure really scary for him. I'm going to ask you both this. It's sort of an obvious question, but uh, bet it feels pretty good uh, to walk out with this kind of win, huh? Always. Yep. Best possible outcome. It's just, it's just amazing, and it's amazing to watch. And uh, we appreciate uh, what both of you do every day in addition to what happened here. Lieutenant Daniel Rohde and Corporal Ryan Schultz, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.